This week on Canada in the Rough, we're hunting in the Yukon. If you love pristine, breathtaking scenery, amazing wildlife encounters, and heart-stopping adventure, then you are not going to want to miss this episode. This week, Kevin Beasley is in the Yukon on one of the hardest hunts you can experience, hunting for mountain sheep. He'll be outfitted by Tombstone Outfitters, and to say Kevin will be tested is an understatement, as he battles not only the mountains, but a massive and horrific lightning and hailstorm, all in the effort of harvesting one of the toughest animals on the planet. Stay tuned for one of Canada in the Rough's most adventurous hunts we have ever filmed, and see why so many people dream of hunting the spectacular territory of the Yukon. Welcome to Dawson City. We're here on a Yukon adventure. We just flew in here this morning. We met with our outfitter, Clint, from Tombstone Wilderness Adventures. We're just about to jump on another plane to head to Spike Camp. We've got a moose tag and a doll sheet tag in our pockets, but here in the Yukon, you never know what's gonna happen. So stay tuned, this is gonna be a great hunt. Dawson City is located in the middle of the Yukon. Visiting this one-of-a-kind town is like taking a step back into time, and though very far from any major cities, it draws some 600,000 visitors each year with its rich history of the gold rush. As the plane touched down along the picturesque river valley, Kevin was greeted by his guide for the hunt, Bert Robidoux. After getting unpacked, Kevin made sure his gun and scope were still on, and with high hopes for tomorrow's hunt, settled into the cabin for the night. Well, folks, welcome to what feels like the top of the world. We've been hiking for about four hours now, and we just got to the top. We're getting to a spot that's perfect for glass in a lot of areas. Here's hoping we'll see some sheep grazing. With a hunt underway in the Yukon, Kevin and Bert continued ascending the mountains in search of sheep. At one point, they did spot a nice grizzly gorging on blueberries on the far side of a large valley, but decided to continue their search for mountain sheep. In this area, the hunting regulations state a legal ram to harvest must be eight years old or have a full curl, which means at least one horn must extend beyond the line between the nostril and eye of the sheep. Well, we just came up over this knoll. We spotted six dolls over here. We got the spotting scope on them and they're all using lambs. But then as we were looking, we seen four rams down here. You think one could be a good one? One's a good one. Yeah? Yeah, one's a fairly good one. So what are we gonna do? We're we gonna get on the back side of this? We need to get a closer look. So we need to go down here and get around these raw arc outcroppings and start going down the hill and get a, stay out of sight and have a Perfect. closer look. Well, let's get going then. Let's go.
Oh, here they are. Man, those two smaller ones won't move. I can't I can't make it with the big guy behind them. Looks nice though. Really big body compared to the other ones. Oh wow, they're head button. I could hear it from here. That's yeah, crazy. Let me get my spot and scope here. I got get a look at this fighting here. You're establishing dominance, looks like it. Yeah. Holy wow. Look at that. That's amazing. Man, he's a nice ram. Just, I guess he doesn't make it. No, the most I can get out of him is seven years old and he's not quite full curl, so. Unfortunately, we're gonna have to pass him up. That's disappointing. He's really close though, eh? Yeah, he's close, especially his left horn is right there, but it's just too close. Well, it was a pretty exciting day though, nonetheless, seeing those rams, man. That, that made my day. Yeah, but we, we sure had to do a lot of hiking today though, eh? Yeah, yeah. We definitely put some miles yeah, on. Yeah, we definitely put some miles on. And we'll probably be doing it again tomorrow, I'm thinking. Yeah, and we have a long ways to go back home too. Well, we better get started then, eh? <laughs> okay. All right. As Kevin Beasley's hunt continued in the Yukon, they spotted a few more sheep, but ultimately decided to move locations. After flying back to Dawson City, they drove a few hours to the stunning Tombstone Mountain Range, where the base camp of Tombstone Outfitters is located. As they woke the following day, the temperatures had dropped dramatically and snow blanketed the mountaintops. With plans to horseback into the mountains in search of new sheep, a storm system moved in and delayed them for a few hours. Luckily, it broke in time for them to continue their Yukon adventure. After about eight hours on horseback, they finally found a spot to make camp. As the sun broke the next day, Kevin and Bert warmed themselves up with a hearty breakfast before hitting the mountains in search of sheep. They hunted hard all day, climbing mountains and glassing many valleys, and found some rams, but none were legal. Unfortunately, weather once again brought the hunt to a standstill. Thick fog and rain eerily moving through the mountains quickly blanketed the beautiful fall colors and socked the guys into spike camp for two straight days. Finally, on the 10th day of the hunt, the weather broke and the hunt was back on. Sheep right over there. Man, look at them rams. There's, there's two huge that gray ones. Dark gray one's huge, eh? Oh my gosh. Look at that one on the top, looking back this way. Look at the way over to the left. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Oh my gosh. Rams. I could see that that other gray one is full curl for sure, too, and he's got some mass. Wow. Got some 40 plus inch rams there. Look at them. Lots of mass. That's just too far. It's too far. Can we relocate? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, definitely. We'll go around. Well, let's get going. Let's go yeah, pack some big rams in there. Oh, monsters. Oh, man. Kevin and Bird spotted a herd of rams and decided to work around the mountain to get in front of them. But what they didn't know was that a horrific lightning and hailstorm was creeping up behind them.
Oh, Bert! What's going on? Oh my gosh, Bert! This awesome. might be the most epic doll oh, sheep man. hunt anybody is ever going to see. Oh, to man. be able to experience that, we sat up over there and this horrible storm came. Yeah. We got pelted with hail oh, and so then we're getting ha hammered with snow right now. Yeah. And then we and sneak over the edge and he is right there. Bert, you betcha. I can't thank September you enough. September 5th, and look at this weather. Exactly. Tombstone Wilderness Adventure <laughs> oh, put man. us on some sheep. <laughs> oh, man. Let's go get our hands on awesome. him, Bert. Awesome. Let's go get our hands on him. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Bert, it finally happened, Bert, for us. <laughs> right on, man. Holy jumpin'. Look at, Look that, at that beautiful, beautiful animal. Pan and ram. Oh my goodness, is he gorgeous. Look at him. Oh wow. my goodness, Look Bert. Look at the weight. Look at him. Look at that girl. That is a beautiful, <laughs> oh! beautiful, beautiful sheep. Look at that. Oh my goodness. What an Bert, awesome is ram. he ever gorgeous? He now, is. Now Bert, now people at home might not understand this, but we were actually after mountain sheep here in the Yukon. That's what our tag actually says. Yes. And this is not actually a doll sheep. It's actually classified as a fan because if I'm if I'm right, a hundred black hairs classifies them as a fan. That's right, that's right. And this one's plenty of fan and he's got the ghost colors. He's he is a fan in one hundred percent. And what that is is that's a cross between a doll and a, and a stone, stone sheep. sheep. Cross Holy jumping bird. Well well how old would this is this sheep, Bert? Okay, well this ram is one and a half, two and a half. Three and a half, four and a half, five and a half, six and a half, seven and a half, eight and a half, nine and a half, and right there, ten, ten, and, ten and a half. half. Ten and a half. Ten and a half year jumping. old. Well, Bert, what a beautiful that was ram. just an unbelievable end to our to our hunt. It is. We had a horrible snowstorm. Yes. Now the sun's finally coming out. Finally coming out. But the work starts now, right, Bert? The work starts now. <laughs> We're going to have to load them up in our backpacks yep. and uh, get them out of here. But let's get a tag on them before we do that. That's right. And uh, thanks again, Bert. That oh. was awesome. Good job. <laughs> wow, look at the beauty. Look. Uh, look how heavy it is. Wow. He's look gorgeous. how heavy. Oh, it's beautiful. Gorgeous. Beautiful. gorgeous. Beautiful. Nice. Well, my Yukon adventure is coming to a close and what an adventure it has been. Being able to come here and see some of the most beautiful scenery in Canada, maybe even in the world, and to be able to watch some of the animals we've seen in their natural environment, and then to be able to take a ram like I took and to eat them over the open fire, that was great. It's been a dream of mine for a long, long time to be able to hunt the Yukon. And if it's a dream of yours, I highly recommend you try to make it happen because it will give you memories that will last a long, long time. Memories that you'll be able to share with your kids and your kids' kids. So if hunting the Yukon is what you want to try to do, make sure you give Tombstone Wilderness Adventures a call. I'm your host, Kevin Beasley from Canada in the Rough. Enjoy the greatness of Canada and be proud of your hunting heritage. Hey folks, hope you enjoyed this video. For more great videos and content, please subscribe to our page and let us know in the comments what you'd like to see. And to follow our amazing adventures around Canada, please join us on Facebook and Instagram.